G'day there. You're watching the Aussie BIM Guru, and today I was going to deal with a user request, and that is how to capture door thresholds in the outline of a room. So the goal today is that we're not only going to capture the room boundary, which would usually be something like this, but we're also going to find this zone of any door connected to the room, and then effectively join it so that we can create things such as floors that go into the threshold zone. Now for the simplicity's sake today, I am gonna always be assuming that the threshold zone is going to occur at the origin of the door, which will typically be at the center of its host wall. Sometimes door thresholds may require a different depth. Sometimes your threshold may lie entirely within one of the rooms and not the other. And this will require a much more advanced workflow that I'm probably not willing to put together in YouTube, um, where you need to detect the swing directions of the doors and basically check if they actually uh, need to go an extra distance beyond the origin point of the door uh, to give that whole threshold, threshold zone to a particular room. But today I'm just gonna make the, the rooms in the middle per se, which is sort of a better than nothing. So I'm gonna be using Dynamo 20 for 2023 today. So I'm just gonna jump over to Dynamo and I will be using one custom package. Um, in this case, I already have installed it, but if you go to search for a package, I've basically installed the Dynamo Iron Python 2.7 and Clockwork for Dynamo package. You can find them basically just by searching for them. Um, so if I look for Clockwork, I can download it here and hit the install button and we're good to go. I'm just using one custom node. So to begin with, um, we're gonna need to get uh, rooms by status uh, or just all the placed rooms. Now you can also do selected rooms, uh, visible views, uh, visible rooms in view. Just to keep things simple, today I'm just gonna do all the rooms in the model, um, but you would probably want to usually filter down if you're in a larger model. It's really just for testing. But from the rooms that we want, I'm gonna use the rooms room doors node from Clockwork. And this will tell me, assuming I have them all on a predictable phase, uh, of course there's gonna be an error because why wouldn't there be? <laughs> I might just try rebooting just to be safe. I've just installed the Dynamo Iron Python 2.7 package, so I'm just gonna make sure uh, that it's working. Um, I'm gonna have a video coming up on the channel quite soon that talks about why I'm probably not gonna be doing as much Dynamo in future. And a big part of that is things like this, just compatibility problems. Yep, there they are. But this is becoming a recurrent issue with Dynamo. Um, just compatibility problems, things not working, um, versions not being consistent. Anyway, I'll end rant, but um, there's things to come in that space. Let's try that again. <laughs> I'd like to keep my errors in here, especially when they relate to software issues beyond my control, just so that the vendors don't get an easy out. But hopefully next time we do that, it'll just work. And if not, then I guess I'll be restarting this video till I can figure out why. So rooms by status, room doors, come on. There we go. It was probably just because I had just installed the Dynamo Iron package, so you might need to potentially reboot your Revit session um, if you've just done that as well. So for now, I'm also gonna get the finish boundary of the room. Now, obviously at this point, we have a valid outline for the room itself, but it doesn't include any thresholds for the doors themselves. So from these lists of curves, I'm gonna join them into poly curves. So I'm gonna use the join curves, I believe it is by joined curves node, which will give me a list of poly curves. Now the reason why these come back in the form of lists is rooms can have more than one loop in their outline. There might be a donut room where you've got a hole in the middle. Now for simplicity's sake in this workflow, I am just gonna deal with these as rooms without donut holes in them, just to keep things simple. Um, you would usually need to deal with these lists of poly curves and actually turn them into surfaces get the one with the biggest area and cut all the ones without the biggest area out of them. It's a heck of a lot of work. I'm not gonna do it in this video, um, but for now I'm just gonna deal with these as simple rooms. So I'm just gonna take the first item from each list at level two, and we end up with just a poly curve per room. So from here, I'm going to use the surface by patch node just to turn these into 3D surfaces like that. I'm just gonna clean up a little bit of my backstream here just so we can look at this just as surfaces. Great. The next thing I'm going to need to do is deal with my doors. So I'm gonna need a couple of pieces of information about these doors. 
First of all, I'm going to need to get their location and get its line connecting it back to the original room it belongs to as a surface. And I'm also going to need to get the width of the door. So in this case, width is a type parameter in the door. So I'm just going to get the elements type first. So I'm going to use element element type. You can also use the get parameter value by name node and ask for its type and then ask that value, which should be its door type for its width as well. Um, again, we're getting an error, which is great. <laughs> I think that's because I need to do this. Yep, there we go. So that one was my fault. So we need to get the doors type instead. A room doesn't have a type. From this, I'm gonna get a parameter value by name. Now, assuming that you're using width as a valid parameter, um, you may need to use a different parameter, potentially, depending on how your door families are set up, but these are just simple doors where I now know the width of my door. So what I'm, what I'm gonna do is get the center of the door and push it either way by half of its width and then connect that back to the room and form a little surface that we can join back to the room itself. So I'm gonna take the width and basically do two things with it. First of all, I want to get the width and multiply it by negative 0.5. So go backwards by half of the width and then also just the width itself. And I'm gonna use those two variables. I'm just putting width in here just because I find it visually more easily understandable if you keep your core outputs of a node together. So in this case, even though width could just be derived from here, I often prefer to put it into the same code block as where I might be getting other things that I've done to it. I'm also gonna get the location of the door. So this will typically be the middle or the placement point of the door. And you can see now I have the placement points of all those doors. Now it's not just per door, it's actually per door in room. So some of these doors will be shared between rooms. What I'm gonna do with that point is then ask it the closest point back to the surface it relates to. So I'm gonna go a little bit forward here. And I'll probably just also carry this around here. And I'm gonna get the closest point to. So to each surface for each list of points, I wanna find the nearest points. And what I can do with these is make a line by start point, end point. So from its location, back to the room. And now what I'm dealing with here is actually little lines that connect these doors back to the room. So if we can extrude this both ways, we can effectively build the threshold surface for each door related to its room surface. So we've got the foundation for the next step of our workflow. Um, the last thing we really need to do now is start figuring out which way to push the surface and then build that surface and join it back to its original surface. So I'm gonna get a normal at parameter for a curve. And in this case, I'll be dealing with 0.5 or the middle of the curve. Now they should be straight lines, so it shouldn't matter. Uh, but in this case, I'm going to ask the center of each of those lines for its normal so that we can push one way and then extrude in the other. So I'm gonna use the translate node to move these lines and I'm gonna do direction plus distance. So for these lines, I'm going to be moving in that direction by half or backwards by half of the threshold. And now you can see we've moved them all by half of the door width. Now I actually want to extrude that line again by a direction and a distance. So that line in this direction. So in this case, it won't be in the negative direction times the width. And we can see now we've generated these threshold surfaces they currently don't actually relate back to their primary surface though. So we need to go and join these. Now this area is really messy. It's hard to really get the wires to not cross over just a little bit here, unfortunately. Um, I've always found this part a bit messy. There's not really a good way to structure this. You can sort of do like that maybe. That's not too bad. Okay, so the last thing we need to do is add the original surface to the front of each list of thresholds. So I'm gonna say two, these lists at level two add this surface at level one, which will add the surface to the front of each list. Now per room, we have a list of surfaces that we can join. And sometimes I like to do longest lacing just to be safe, but I think by default, this node assumes longest lacing is to be used. I'm now gonna make a surface by union. And this should now generate the combined surfaces with the threshold. So let's go back a little bit and do some cleanup and just hide some of these things that we don't want to see in our preview. 
It's up to you which things you do want to see. Maybe you do want to see the locations of your doors. Uh, but in this case, I'm just going to see these surfaces. So now I can see I've got my four surfaces. Um, I can always uh, just look at one of them to visualize it and see that it's working. So if I turn these off and just look at the first item, uh, there it is. So I can see in this case my my surface is in fact working. Excellent. So I'll just turn this preview back on. And from these we want to ask them for their perimeter curves so we can create a floor out of these. And there we go. We can now see these are our floors with the thresholds connecting at the middle of each junction. Um, the last thing we want to do is really just generate a floor for each one. So I'm going to use a floor by outline type and level. And depending on how you've set your rooms up, maybe they're not all on one level, you could always go back and get the level of the room. So in this case, I can ask these rooms, I believe the level parameter should be the one we're targeting. And in, in great Dynamo fashion, of course, it doesn't return the actual level object. So what we can do now is get the matching level. So let's get all elements of class. Let's get the level class. Let's get the names of those levels. Uh, let's get the index of those names. So where does this name occur in that list? So now we should get a index. In this case, we can see the first level. There's only one level, of course, but if there was more than one, this would be how we could get it. So now we get the level with that name. And now we have the room's levels. So I'm just gonna to switch to manual mode. And connect that to level, that to the lists of outline curves. And finally, we just need a floor type. For now, I'll just pick something rough, just floor one. But now when we run this, it should generate a finish floor inclusive of the threshold zones. And you can see we've effectively achieved our goal in creating floors that do meet at their threshold junction. And that's effectively it. So the last thing that I like to do with scripts like this, and I'm just gonna say this is a level script, call it whatever you want, is just clean it up a little bit. So I like to break these into things that we're getting and things that we're doing. So I would just say in this case, this is one group. Usually I make my automatic inputs orange and I'll say, get rooms and their doors. Now you can of course add more description in Revit 2023. I'm just gonna keep things simple. Um, let's just clean this up, condense it a little bit. This is always hard to make neat. Usually I like to make processing nodes purple. room levels, we can start to minimize these because by default they will always be minimized. By now a lot of people probably aren't watching anymore because we've solved the problem, but I'll do it anyway. Uh, room finish boundaries and surface, surfaces. Our next step would be the door width. width and threshold offsets. Uh, this step would now be building our door threshold line. So let's call this threshold line. Our next step would then be, in this case, getting the actual threshold. Get actual thresholds. And then we would be effectively, you could put these into two steps probably. I would probably usually put this in its own step, just for clarity. I would say this is join threshold to room surfaces. And finally, usually I like to use blue for creation steps. And I would say make floors at levels per rooms. And that's it, um, just a quick little script um, to process some geometry, but we can see effectively it solved the problem. So hopefully that's been useful for the original requester. 
um, and that, that's, um, that's it solved. Um, so you can find this on my GitHub. Um, if you're not familiar with it, you can access it via the internet, um, not via Acrobat. Um, so I'll be putting this in the Aussie BIM Guru Dynamo script repo with a date around about the release date of this video, um, and hopefully you find this a useful resource. So if you're not already following and subscribing, uh, feel free to do so, and I look forward to seeing you in future similar videos. Thanks. Take care.